Coming up in the first fishing episode, Eddie from PAC Kayak Rentals is taking us on a mothership ride 10 miles into the marsh, and the fish are cooperating. There you go. Look at that guy. All four of us spend the day sight casting to countless redfish, some of which are absolute monsters. Then, at the end of the day, Gene hooks into something enormous. It's a good one. Golly. Nice. Dude, that is a stud. Alright guys, first morning here in Point of Shan. What we're doing today, Eddie, one of the owners of PAC Kayak Rentals, he's gonna mothership us. We're gonna put four kayaks on this boat and run it out to kind of a sweet spot out in the marsh. <laughs> All right guys, so I just started getting the Mystery Tackle Box subscription and Gene Jensen here has been a subscriber for a while now, right? Since the beginning. Since the beginning. So we thought it'd be fun to do a little challenge today. So I've got the Mystery Tackle Box Pro Inshore Box. What do you got? I've got the Bass Box. He's got the Bass Box. So we're gonna do a little challenge. What do we say? First fish. And biggest fish. And biggest fish. Caught on these lures, we're gonna see who can take it home. He's gonna be using bass gear. I'm gonna be using the inshore gear. So I definitely got the advantage, but this guy is a way better angler, so. <laughs> We'll see, and then what? Loser's gonna buy dinner? Yeah, loser's gonna buy dinner. Loser's gonna buy steaks for dinner tonight. Cool. We'll see, man. Bust kick. Let's bust kick butt. <laughs> bust kick butt. <laughs> All right, guys, so before we shove off on the boat, I'm gonna open up my mystery taco box, doing this contest with Gene, and see what I got, see if I got a chance today to beat this guy. So first up, we got this net bait, the go-to bait, little paddle tails. Uh, it's dark color, we got really stained water, it's dark water, so I really like to throw dark colors for that, and any kind of swim bait, paddle tail, is gonna catch fish. Redfish, trout, you name it. And I've got a, a, actually a bait company that I love. This is Egret Baits. Um, this is their wedge tail eel. So another kind of swim bait. They've got a really unique tail design. Um, this is gonna be a little lighter color so when that sun gets up, with that chartreuse tail, this should catch fish too. And it's a little bit longer. So if they're really feeding aggressively, I can upsize from that swim bait to this swim bait. Hopefully get some bigger fish in the boat. Then we've got this guy. This is from Smart Baits. I've actually seen these online. These will change colors from chartreuse to blood red. Um, out here, chartreuse is definitely gonna be, I think, more effective in this stained water. Um, but that's pretty cool. The whole bait color will change this hard bait, different color. It's kind of like a lipless crankbait. Then we've got some FinTech SS Minnow uh, jig heads. These have a little blade on them for a little flash, and it's actually removable, which is pretty cool. So uh, I can throw this with the blades when the sun's up, and if they're not hitting, maybe they're being a little more finicky today, I can take that blade off for a little more subtle presentation. Then I've got Unfair Lures again, great company. This is the Unfair Lures. Paul Dinkum shrimp, 110 millimeters. This is a hard bait shrimp. You tie it from the back, so it kind of looks like it's fleeing from bait uh, from predators. Um, super realistic. It's got some nice rattles in there. And then finally, I've got some Z-Man. So these guys are all huge Z-Man fans. Uh, I haven't used a ton of their stuff, but here's a chance. This is their scented shrimps in blood worm color. So super natural looking presentation. Z-Man's known, they're plastic. It's super elastic. You can stretch it like crazy. It doesn't get torn up. So even though there's just six of them in here, these things should last through maybe a dozen or more fish because they just really are hard to break and, and get chewed up by fish. Super realistic. So if we find some clear water and I want to, you know, sight cast with some redfish, a little more subtle kind of finesse presentation, I'll put this on a super light jig head and be able to pitch that out right in front of a redfish and I have a feeling as soon as it hits the water, these things will get smashed. This right here might be my, my little secret weapon against Gina today. We'll see. And then uh, and a lot of the Mystery Tackle Box, they'll uh, include a little scent. So this is uh, Mystery Tackle Box's little scent tube, so I can pour this on any of those soft plastics, give a little scent. Not only lets the fish, you know, hit it and find it easier, but also typically they'll hold on to it a little longer because it, you know, smells and tastes natural. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this box. I mean, he's got the bass box, so uh, I have a feeling he's gonna be buying steaks tonight. got to the spot about seven miles from where we're staying uh, Eddie says this is the spot that uh, some guys right here caught about 41 redfish 
uh, just a couple days ago. So definitely got potential good fishing. I mean, we are out here, no boats or houses or anything around. All right, so we've got really stained water. It's really shallow. Um, I mean, fishing the grass is kind of where these redfish will tend to hang out. So I'm gonna start out uh, in this mystery toggle box. I got these net baits, little spankies and green pumpkin. It's a nice little paddle tail, not too big. Um, so we'll kind of see what they're in the mood for. If they're feeding real aggressively, I'll upsize and uh, try to get a bigger fish in the boat. And I'm gonna put that on one of these FinTech SS Minnow um, jig heads, with a little flasher. Like I said, really stained water and stained water. I like dark colors and I like chartreuse. So this is a chartreuse jig head. It's got that little flasher on it. Now I'm competing with Gene today. Fluke master, I mean, he's one of the best anglers out there. Uh, people know him as a guy that's teaching the world to fish. So even though he's got bass lures, I'm still a little worried about this uh, challenge we got going on. I don't make much money, so I'm not really trying to buy his steak tonight. Gene's over here playing dirty. He's cut me off in this little tight channel. I see how you do. About a good defense. If they don't score, you don't lose. There you go. <laughs> what? Neil's got first fish. Monster. Oh, he's got a runt. No. Oh, little rat red. A rat. <laughs> Dude, first fish is a rat. Do we want to count it? I feel like we can't. That's why we did biggest fish. Oh, yeah, we did. I'm definitely not in the running for biggest fish with this guy. All right, well, sitting here right next to Gene, just stuck a uh, first fish. Now, not exactly the monster reds we're out here to catch, but I'll take it. We said first fish and biggest fish. Uh, I'd say I'm, I'm definitely not in the running for biggest fish right now, but that's first fish, Gene. Oh, uh, you suck. <laughs> nice. Oh, We've been watching some big wakes. There's some bigger fish up in there. Yeah, there's some big fish. Uh, the bigger ones eluded me, but. <laughs> All right, first fish goes to Rob. Plenty of room left to upsize for biggest fish. All right, so after throwing that uh, little spanky there for a little bit, I'm realizing that jig head's just too heavy. It's 3 8 ounce. Now, the way that we fish out here for redfish in Louisiana marsh, um, the best way to do it is basically not to blind cast. So we'll stand up, paddle around. You want to look for tails sticking out of the water. Sometimes their backs will be sticking out of the water. It's so shallow. Um, sometimes you just see a wake. They'll push like kind of a V wake up along the grass. And now other fish will push wakes too, like mullet or, or even trout. Um, but typically a redfish, you can tell it's a lot wider of a wake. They're just a beefier fish. And so I'm basically gonna just be kind of paddling around, looking, listening, um, kind of, you know, tuning into the marsh and looking for any signs of redfish, and then I'm gonna sight cast to them. So typically you wanna cast uh, something pretty light so that when it lands, it doesn't make a huge splash and spook them. So that jig head I had on was just a little too heavy. It was 3 8 ounce, um, just making too big of a splash. So I went ahead and tied on that Z-Man uh, shrimp instead. Super realistic, really natural presentation. And I've tied it on a lighter jig head. Now, Gene said it wouldn't be cheating if I used a, a different jig head than I got in uh, this month's box. And this is actually a jig head that I got in last month's box. So it's still a mystery tackle box bait. But he said, as long as I'm using the plastic from this month's box, we'll, we'll call it fair. So a um, little lighter presentation. So what I'm gonna do basically is, is kind of reel this up so that it's ready to cast. And I'm gonna stick it in this new Railblazer uh, rod holder that I just got in. And I'm gonna stand up and paddle and just look and listen and wait to see signs of redfish, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cast at them. I see a redfish tailing right there. His tail just came out of the water twice. It's a little too far for me to throw my, that lighter shrimp. I'm worried I'm gonna spook him with this, but we're gonna give it a shot. It was just short of him. Looked like a pretty good sized red tail came right out of the water that's what we're looking for so I don't want to get too close to this guy and spook him I'm gonna get kind of upwind from him and then I'll be able to, to cast that lighter bait down to Adam fish on feels like a pretty good one Fish on, nice red fish, nice red fish. 
Oh yeah. Nice red. Yep, solid red. Oh yeah. Ooh. Solid fish. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Woo -hoo. I think I just lost. That's what I'm talking about. Nice fish right there. Got him on that uh, Z-Man shrimp that came in the mystery tackle box. Saw him tailing. I was having to work for him for a while. Couldn't find him. And then I saw him swirl one more time. Cast out right by that oyster bar. And sure enough, he smashed it. Oh, what a fun fight. Well, it ain't over yet, but I got first fish. And so far, I've got biggest fish up here against Gene. But it is still early. I haven't been out here very long. So plenty of time left. That's a good one too. Nice. Brooks Betty getting them on top water, having a little fun. I know, he ran right past my boat. I think there's more than one in here, man. I just saw a redfish tail pop up right here. There it is, there it is. Got him. Got him on. It's not quite as big. He's decent. Looks like a small slot. All right. Let's go ahead. Nice. Nice little red. Bigger than that first one I got. Not quite as big as the second one. But, uh, you know, I saw him over here tailing. I cast at him. He immediately turned on it, went right to it, but didn't hit it. Uh, but I just kind of stuck with it. He's hung out in that same area, cast back a couple more times. And that third time, I was watching him follow it right towards my boat. And sure enough, he smashed it. The line started going sideways and I knew I had him on. Put up a great fight for how, how small he is. He's got three spots. Uh, typically they'll just have one spot on each side, but some redfish will have a ton of spots. They're redfish without spots. This guy's got a little extra spot right there. But uh, beautiful fish, put up a great fight. That Z-Man shrimps I got in the mystery taco box is doing work right now. Go ahead and release this guy, see if we can't find some more. There he goes. <laughs> Gene Jensen got his first black drum. Pretty solid one. They get really big, but that's, that one's solid. Put up a good pot, I'm sure. Long time coming. God, he ate it. He wanted it. Finally, man. Woo! And I remember why I love them. Even though they weren't treating me so good today, we on the board. We still got, we're about to get in the promised land right here, so. Get this one on back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was ready. All right, so it has gotten hot. Uh, I'd say unseasonably warm. It's late in the year. And, uh, you know, these Sidewinder bibs were money this morning when it was cold. But uh, I'm hot now. I'm over it. So I'm going to shed these. Get a little more comfortable, man. It is uh, getting warm out here. One thing I love about these Sidewinder bibs is they uh, they actually aren't too insulated. And so you can really wear them in pretty warm temperatures and still be comfortable. But, I mean, it's gotta be pushing 80 degrees, the sun's out. And uh, while it's not unbearable, I definitely don't need them. You can't really wait around here. You know, in, in Southwest Florida, it's sandy bottom, so you can get out and wade, but here, if I try to wade, I will sink to uh, about my chest in mud. The mud here just, it's like quicksand almost. Oh, you got one on? Nice. I'll come film you. 
Was, was he tailing or what? No, he was, he was Dude, swimming at us. He touched the rod tip in the water and he ate it. I go, oh, he, he just ate it. That next to the boat? Yeah, we saw him. He went under his boat and was in between our boats. And I took my rod and dropped it in the water like that. And he, what? Yeah, it's a big, big red. Sounds like a big one. In the net, boys. Nice little red right there. Literally swam under the boat, under Brooks's boat, came straight at me, and I opened the bell and dropped the line in the water, and he ate it. And I was probably as shocked as he was to see that happen. Let's get her back. Drive it a little bit. Oh, there she goes. On the right. That's a sheephead. I can see it. I can see the bars. The... See him right there? He just came out of the water. Yeah. Oh, sheep. Oh, I'm on. <laughs> I don't know if it's a red or not. That's nah, it's a red. Little, little guy. Nice. Jameson called out a fish right in front of me. I didn't see. And sure enough, first cast. You hit it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Brooks, for getting out of the way so I could catch this guy. Sweet of you. I mean, he's just a little. He's just a little. Ow, ow, ow. Decent little fish. Go ahead and submit this guy in the fish brain app. Let this little guy go, see if we can't find something a little bigger than that. They're spread out, but they're chewing, so you know, just gotta be real stealthy. Try not to spook them and uh, just place your cast right. And they're eating if you, if you put it in front of their face. Nice. This power pole is money. Saw the fish, didn't really have time to stop. Just hit the button twice. I anchored down before I got up on them and spooked them. Uh, when you're fishing the marsh or really anywhere with shallow water, uh, the power pole is an invaluable tool. Uh, I know it's not the uh, cheapest accessory out there, but you know, I probably would have missed that fish without it. So, Z-Man shrimp still in perfect condition, working really well. The mystery tackle box delivered so far. It's the first thing I tied on from the box. And that's four fish on this exact same bait. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm literally just sitting and looking and listening. This is a really good choke point right off this main channel. I saw some reds in here earlier, but I spooked them. You know, a lot of times you'll stand up, you won't see anything because they're sitting still. A lot of times redfish are just gonna hang out. Right now I'm just standing up. I came back, let this kind of chill out. And now I'm just waiting and looking for any kind of copper color or a wake or like was the case here a little bit ago, actually see the fish. And you know, with a lot of styles of fishing, I don't think this is so important, but when you're skinny water, shallow water red fishing, being stealthy is key. These fish are in really shallow water, so birds can tend to prey on them. A lot of times you'll see ospreys with like redfish and trout in their talons. Um, you know, they, they're so easy to see from up above, so they can be a little wary of anything that's up above them casting a shadow. So what I've found is that if I stand up and just don't move, don't speak too loud, that a lot of times these redfish will cruise right next to you. And the kayak offers the perfect platform for this style of fishing. Super stealthy, no motors. Oh, there's a good wake right there. That was not a good cast. There's some oysters right there, I feel them. Trying to make a better cast, get out ahead of them a little bit. But you can see that wake right there. So there's a lot of mullet in here and some of them are pretty good size, so it can be really misleading. You know, they'll make a wake in the water too. And now normally you can tell just by the size what kind of fish is making the wake, but some of these big mullet in here will put out a pretty good wake. Bad cast, spooked him. But he's still hanging out over here. Oh, there's another one right there. Oh yeah, I got redfish all over me right now. Thank you. 
fish out. It's a good one. Nice. Watched him turn on it the second I hopped it. I cast it out in front of him so I wouldn't spook him. Nice. And uh, I just kind of hit it there in the grass. And then the second he came close enough, I hopped it once. He turned on it and just inhaled it right away. Nice fish too. This is a good one. This is a good one. Oh yeah, upper slot it looks like. Nice fish. Oh yeah, he's not giving up. Right. If I can get this guy to the net. Come on, buddy. No, no. Under the kayak. Come on, come on, get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, come on. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. He's not wanting to cooperate. He doesn't like the net. Come on in here, buddy. Uh, you don't want to tighten your drag down with these fish. Redfish are just bruisers. Really strong, capable of making a strong run, even late in the fight. And uh, you want to have your drag loose enough that... Nice! Woo! Now that is the type of South Louisiana redfish we came here for. Oh my gosh, what a stud fish. Woo! Look at that guy. Nice belly on her. Oh man, beautiful fish. Wow. Woo! Tank, and I got to watch her cruising the entire time, sight casted right in front of her. What an absolute blast. I mean, that's what we come down here for. Sight fishing, big old gals like this. Oh man, that was a fun, fun fight. I'm testing out this, uh, this Lama Glass Kayak Series rod. Uh, this is the PK724S, it's a 7.2, 8 to 17 pound test line. And super impressed with this so far. Uh, cast great, super sensitive. Really, really nice rod. Oh man, this girl, she put it to the test, but it held up great. Not a bad one, huh? I lost. <laughs> Look at this guy. I caught one 23 inches, does that nice. count? Not too shabby right there. I cast it out like five feet in front of her. Mm -hmm. Just kind of let it sit there. And as soon as she got close enough within like a foot of it, I just gave it one little hop, man. And she just turned and inhaled it oh, that's immediately. Awesome. That's so awesome. Nice fish, man. Woo, that was fun. There were like six in here. I mean, now they're now they're gone. But uh, yeah, I rolled up in here and I was looking at like four reds. Measure this guy on the accent field angler. See how long she is. Uh, she's a slot. What's the slot here? 27. A hair under 27. I called 26 that. 26 and 7 eighths, man. Called that one. Right at the top of the slot. Nice fish. Beautiful fish. Go ahead and release this gal. What a fight. What a fun hookup. Oh yeah, I just saw him. Where are the school bulls? Got Jameson here. It's hooked up to a stud redfish. I haven't gotten a good look at it yet, but it is definitely a good fish. He's been fighting it. It's been peeling out drag. Dude, that is a stud. I need a bigger net. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> it's a beast thick, too. Getting back in the water. We just spooked a bunch of sheephead, Gene and I here. Thought they were reds, but man, that, that was the biggest sheephead I've ever seen. That was a stud, the one that was right under my boat doing whatever. There's reds in here mixing in with them though. Like I said, I saw about six when I first rolled up in that spot back there. They couldn't have gone far. See that right there, it looks more like a red. Reds are typically like straight run. Mm -hmm. Wakes or sheephead dart around exactly. 
Look at this. That's one right there. That's a pretty, that's a good sheep head, man. Yeah. I wouldn't mind catching that guy. They'll hit this little shrimp, I think. I got one right here. Now because of the glare, I can't see where it went. Keep your eyes peeled over here, man, towards me. It might have come towards you. I don't know. I'm liking the feel of this, man. There's some reds around here. Here's one of these big sheep head. Got him. Big old sheep head, dude. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I watched him grab, swipe at it like five times before he finally inhaled it. Oh, dude. Whoo. This is easily my personal best sheep head right here. Uh, I've never one caught one close to that size. Dude. And now he's all up in this stuff. Come on, get out of there. Oh, yeah. Dude, nice sheep head, man. What? <laughs> Pulled out more drag than any of the reds so far. Come on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at this thing, dude. No. <laughs> No way, man. That is about 10 times the size of my personal best sheep head. No way, man. I pitched it right in front of him and he just kind of meandered up to it. Now that is a sheep head. Look at that thing. What a beast. Oh my gosh, this is a sheep head. Uh, if you watch my West Coast series, you saw me catch California sheephead, and I alluded to the difference between them and the sheephead we get here in the Gulf. Um, completely different fish. People call these convict fish. You kind of see in there, they've got essentially like human-like teeth, almost sheep-like teeth. That's where they get their name, and uh, wow, what a blast this guy was. I mean, far and away the biggest sheephead I've ever caught. What a fish, man. <laughs> nice. Good fish, man. Fun fish. So now you're getting picky, huh? Yeah, right. It's a good problem to have. He turned on it, but he didn't. Oh, he's still there. Two hours ago, we weren't picky. Yeah, you know it's a good day fishing when you're looking right at a redfish and you're like, ah, he's too small. I'm just, <laughs> nah. I meant to do that. This boat, though, man, you can. Yeah. Really stable. This is, too. It's a really nice platform. I like this. My first time in the Coos HD. I'm, oh, really? I'm impressed, man. All right, so we're kind of calling this uh, this competition. Um, he's got the bass box, so I'm gonna go ahead and give him a couple of these Z-Man <laughs> shrimp I got in my my inshore box. Cause I suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> no man, they've been working, they've been wanting it. Yep. Uh, like I said, I I put it on kind of like a shaky head almost, so it stands up, but I don't yeah. think it matters too much. I just put it on something light so you can cast near yeah, him and not. Yeah, this is uh, eighth ounce, I think. Eighth ounce, yeah, money. Yeah. It's working, man. The inshore box, they know what they're doing. They put good stuff in there. Yep. This will work back at home in Florida too. Happy, happy. We'll get on them. They're still in this area too. Check out this beast of a black drum that Gene Jensen, the Fluke Master, just got. 20 pound test. Look at that thing. That is a beast. Hell of a fish, man. Covered in slime. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna need you to wash your hands before you cook his dinner. <laughs> All right, so Eddie just pulled up with the boat. The guys are starting to load up the kayak, so that's gonna mark the end of today. 
Uh, what a freaking way to kick off the trip. I mean, we all caught, caught multiple fish. I think I got six or seven reds to the boat. Got that stud sheephead. Jameson landed a huge redfish. And then Gene kind of topped off the day with that big black drum. I mean, all of us caught fish. Uh, not a bad first day for being out here, kind of figuring out the fishery, seeing what's going on this time of year. But, uh, you know, South Louisiana rarely disappoints in my experience. And today was no exception. What a fun day. We're gonna go get loaded up, head back in, get our gear cleaned off, dump SD cards, charge batteries, all that work, and then uh, probably get some grub, enjoy a few beers, get back out there and do it again tomorrow. Coming up next episode, I'm testing out the Wilderness Systems Radar 135 fishing a new area with the guys. The fish are just as plentiful, but they're not feeding as aggressively as on day one. It's been a lot of work for it, but it feels good to finally get one. Oh my god. <laughs> While I start off struggling, a change in tactics leads to the epic hookup that I came here for. Fish on. Ooh. Yep, getting this other line in so that I don't wrap it around there. Oh yeah. Really nice redfish. 